Hello and welcome to How to Write a Musical in Quarantine. We have the full creative uh, force behind us for the new, um, the new theatrical sensation, The Crooked Spire, a medieval murder mystery musical. I think I got all the M's in the right place there. Yes, um, so we have Martin Coslett, Peter Gray and Mary Hennessy with us and I'll ask them all to give a brief introduction to who they are, maybe a bit of background if you like and what your roles were um, in the creative process behind The Crooked Spire. So Martin, can you kick us off? Hi Tim, uh, good to be with you. Uh, yeah, Peter and I met up about a year ago and uh, we came across this story by Chris Nixon which is the novel called The Crooked Spire and uh, my father-in-law enjoyed reading it and got me into the idea that we we'd like to do a uh, theatrical telling of the of the tale so peter and i spent a whole evening discussing what we loved about musical theater and music and everything and i'd already met you and mary through writers in the peak and uh, mary was keen on helping so we got the team together and uh, yeah that's how it started a year ago and then we, uh, in June, June the 11th, Mary said, oh, why don't we do something to support Buxton Fringe? So we had yeah. a month to get uh, the Buxton Fringe, the 20 minute version ready for that. So that's what we did. Excellent. Um, so uh, Peter, anything, anything to add from your end about? Okay, uh, yeah, I remember the meeting with Martin and we, we chatted away uh, for a long time and we both shared an interest in folk music. So we're trying to put some folk themes in the music to, uh, to this show. Um, I've lived in Chesterfield for about 25 years and a few years ago uh, I helped organise a commemoration of the Chesterfield or well, the 750th anniversary of the Battle of Chesterfield which was a tiny little skirmish at the end of the Simon de Montfort rebellion. Anyway that gave me a, a flavour for the medieval period in Chesterfield and uh, working on the Crooked Spire has kind of reignited that interest. Excellent and Mary would you like to add anything? Yeah, I met Martin at, at the Writers in the Peak and we got talking about um, scripts. I write plays, I've put plays on for many years in the Buxton Festival Fringe. And so um, we, we talked about whether I could adapt the book to turn it into a stage play. So with Martin's guidance, that's what I did. And then of course we, lockdown came covid stopped us from meeting which we had been doing most maybe every week or fortnight and so we decided we'd try to do something online for the fringe both to keep us going mm -hmm. because we didn't want to lose the impetus of, of what we were developing and to support the fringe and it worked quite well fantastic i i, I saw the yeah, the, the, the YouTube version and it, yeah, it was excellent. It really whetted the appetite to see the, the, full, the full show at some point, hopefully, after all this lockdown, semi-lockdown has kind of drifted away sooner rather than later, hopefully. Um, so how much, how much did you all develop the Crooked Spire before lockdown um, began? And how did, how did that process change uh, once, once lockdown had descended? Uh, well, we'd got quite a lot done. M Mary mentioned that we'd been uh, meeting up quite frequently in the in the months over the uh, over the winter period and into the beginning of the spring. We'd travel out to Buxton and, and meet up at her house. Um, so there's quite a lot of the storyline and the script already set, um, and we were developing the characters, trying to write some backstory. Um, and Martin and I were plugging away on the music again, meeting up in his house mostly, where he's got a studio set up trying out ideas, lyrics and things, and then reporting back to Mary. So that's kind of, you know, it's quite well advanced. But as Mary said, we didn't want to lose that impetus when lockdown happened. Um, so then we meant, went, moved on to Zooming and mm. had a set up a regular Monday schedule when we'd meet up and chat things through. Did, did that present different challenges to you all, like meeting via Zoom rather than in person? Was it, did it make it more difficult to to share ideas, how, how, how would you assess that element of the process? Technically, it was quite a challenge. Um, Technically. Um, we had Harry, Harry on board, who's arranging and musical director. Uh, 
but before that we'd only done two songs and we had had to get a new script so between june the 11th and july the 17th we wrote the 20 minutes basically and recorded it all and uh so it was it was, uh, it was quite a challenge but with your help and and other actors on board uh, who were happy to record their bits in their rooms and their houses, uh, it worked really well. I thought. Well, I, I hope people thought it did. I thought that, that's what that's what I felt watching watching back. I enjoyed, yeah, and and, and I enjoyed. We got to hear some of the 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 songs kind of um, in in their in 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 their early. We didn't hear the full clips of the songs, but we heard we heard bits and pieces. So it it seems that there have been elements kind of of more period and more contemporary uh styles kind of mixed together for the for the music so could you could you tell me a bit more about where the idea came from and how how that happened yeah peter okay yeah um we both have this idea uh, of enjoying folk music so we wanted some of the folky themes in it but then we keep writing our own so we've chosen a couple of uh of traditional folk tunes so far but then we keep having the fun of writing our own music our own melodies for the songs um so it, it's it is a mixture of the two and and we can't quite tell which song or which scene is going to have a contemporary song or which so scene or song is going to be a more of a traditional one we yeah we we particularly discussed the idea of the, it being in 1360 in a medieval period so we wanted to use uh, modes and uh, scales from that period and and also um, fourths and fifths the intervals and so uh, we we used the challenge of the medieval style with our modern music and, yeah. uh, and sort of fusing them together that's the idea so are, are there any songs where it kind of flits between in the middle kind of it starts with something a bit more period and then and then goes kind of to a very jazzy modern number is, is, is there any songs that have that kind of that kind of switch or is that different well, the underlying uh, accompaniment uses themes from that period that idea. so it sort of blends through the ideas to blend it through the piece eventually yeah. there is there yeah. is one that mixes it very well though isn't it because the water is wide has got well it's got different versions of traditional lyrics but Martin's put modern lyrics into it so you get the you get the, the fusion of the old music with the new lyrics mm. applied to a medieval setting yeah so that we, worked very well I think yeah we did a similar thing with uh, Morgan Rattler which is uh, from about 1086 or 1046 I'll get it right oh, wow Lee uh, Morgan Rattler is a, a jig which uh, Peter Peter founded this band it's called uh, Brampton Community Band and the bass player Roy there it's his pièce de, de résistance a, a tune called Morgan Rattler <laughs> did a bit of research on it uh, and it goes back very early tune uh, a Morgan Rattler was like a um, some counties they call it a regular Bobby Dazzler <laughs> it's a, a, a chap who's a Another definition is a loaded club, apparently. Um, but he's he's quite a lad. This this uh, John the carpenter, when he arrives in Chesterfield. Anyway, we thought it applied to him, um, and we used that tune, and we use and and the Brampton Community Band accompanied our song, which is now called "Seize the Day," as he arrives in Chesterfield. Wow. Excellent. So you've told me a bit about how you kind of adapted old music and, and put in new lyrics, but Mary, you were chiefly tasked with taking an already written novel and adapting it um, into a script. So um, could you tell me a bit about how, what was that, that was like? What are the challenges when you're taking something that's already been written and trying to put it into a new medium? How did you find that process? Well, well there's two, two parts to it, really, because um, we'd all read the book. Um, when Martin suggested that we do it um, but Martin sent me a brief I think I don't know something like a 10 point plan I think Martin wasn't it of which bits he wanted me to look at and uh, so that that was the first bit and then I had to I didn't read the book again after I originally wrote it because I didn't want to completely inter interpret what happened in the book but we needed to keep to the essential story of the book. And so then it, 
it was left to my uh, free reign to, to write the score. Is it called a score? I heard it's called a book, a score, a, a, a script. Um, yeah. And uh, so, so Martin left me with quite a bit of freedom to do what I liked. But then when I got the outline of it all, we shared it. Mm. Uh, we put it on Google Docs and P Peter and Martin made suggestions. And then I went back and rewrote bits, added, took away until so we were fairly happy with what we've got. So if you've read the book and you think there's surprises in there, there's more, even more. <laughs> even more. <laughs> so, so how about the, ch the challenge of when you've, got, when you've got people writing kind of um, songs and like composing music and writing songs and then someone else also writing a, a, a script, were there, were there any challenges of, of melding the lyrics and the, and the kind of general script together? Is that? Yeah. Yeah, we we are we are kind of still doing that. Okay, that's an ongoing process. The, the main the main script has been put on hold because we've uh -huh. been concentrating on the on the showcases. Um, so we're looking at only the music that applies to the showcase that we're looking at. If, if you follow me. Yes. And um, one of the things we we have been careful about is making sure that we don't double up the music and. The, the the dialogue so, we're, so we, we do work closely on that if, if i think something doesn't fit in the period or or something's been doubled up in the script we either go back and change the song or we change the script yeah the music's got to do a job in the uh in the piece is it telling story in which case we we can use mary's script to make the lyrics uh, and make that the t storytelling or is it getting an emotion across uh, it's quite fun learning for me what 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 the music does in a musical uh, that's where google docs was really useful because we could write rude comments to each other <laughs> so obviously we've been talking about like uh, lockdown quarantine and, and how the process kind of changed a bit what what have been the biggest challenges would you say to to writing and developing um, a new musical in lockdown and then conversely is there any way in which the restrictions have helped out at all well as i say google docs was really helpful but actually one of the restrictions was working with uh, harry the arranger um, and downloading stuff and, and that we often get corrupted files and all that sort of stuff so That's it. Um, yeah. Another uh, advantage, I'll, I'll just mention one and it, see what the others think, but is that we, we were able to work with actors who, who were in Surrey and in other places, which was an advantage on Zoom, which would be more difficult if we were bringing them to a theatre. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've, I've found a greater emphasis on family responsibilities, I think, in <laughs> lockdown. And that feels like it's taken taken more of my time and energy to, to support family not just in this house but you know around the country and other people and friends as well who are maybe shielding or something like that so in a strange way not having freedom has meant less freedom in, 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 you know, so not not having to go and do other things you think oh you've got lots of free time but actually other stuff has has, has occurred to, to fill up that time that's my perception of it and and for me it, it's it's the opposite because i think you know when you write we all, we all write so we know what it is you, it's quite a lonely thing you sit in a room on your own and you sit you write for hours and you quite often get interrupted by people people knocking on the door people phoning you up and it was great to have time to just sit and do that so i i didn't mind being locked away <laughs> That's a great, great, uh, great variety of responses. Thank you all. Um, I want to talk a bit about Ashgate Heritage Arts, who um, have produced or are producing the show. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how they got started and what what they are? So it's a new organisation that we we launched last September, and it's the three of us. Um, we we needed a vehicle really to to tell the story and other stories. Um, partly we needed a bank account if we want to start applying for funds or want to sell tickets or all, all, all those sorts of things. So it's, it's, it's initially an administrative tool, um, but we want to help 
other people tell stories, particularly, I suppose, in the Chesterfield area, but, but wider afield if, if necessary. Um, so it's a kind of an umbrella organisation. We've got this particular project is the top of the pile at the moment, but we'd like to support getting Martin's um, uh, show called um, Ferguson's Gang back on the road, or at least on the road sometime. Uh, and so Ashgate Heritage Arch, again, could be the production company for that. And um, maybe the next time Mary writes, if she wants a company uh, to support, although she's done plenty of time, plenty of stuff on her own back without needing anything else. Excellent. So are there, are there any other projects that everyone would like to would like to plug while we potentially have the a captive audience in a, to attention? Or or is this, or is this the sole focus for for some of some of you at the moment? I, I, I put a second play on in ah, yes. the festival. I put um, a play that I'd written many years ago called "Sounds Like the NHS," but because there's such an emphasis on the NHS at the moment, I updated it and turned it into an audio play. And uh, uh, Helen Grady, who plays Martha in *The Crooked Spire*. It's a monologue, and she she read it fabulously. She she's 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 um she's worked at the the uh, Royal Shakespeare Theatre as well in Stratford, so it was quite a thing to have her. And, I th and we had another um, actor who was a Shakespeare actor. Is that right, Martin? Yeah, singing. Jamie Nor sang for yeah. us on one of the pieces. We had a, so a she, cast. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so 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 I was doing that, but and of course we, you know, we we put the writers in the peak on as well. So we did quite a lot over lockdown. It's, I mean, there's there's obviously this parallel between the the thirteenth, uh, hang on, fourteenth century and the and the Great Plague, uh, mm. you know, that pandemic, and then the fact that we're in a pandemic now. Our story set after the main outburst of the outbreak of the of the plague in, in the 14th century and, and and communities are beginning to recover from that there's references to a lack of skilled workers and people's families are, are, are greatly depleted you know it's possible that maybe a third of the population of the country died uh, in that first outbreak and then it, and, and then it reoccurs over the over the next decades and centuries um, and yet here we are in the middle of one yeah. are we coming out of a pandemic at the moment or are we just coming up for breath before the next mm. dive under so there's kind of lots of resonance there that have become more and more obvious to us as we worked and so it was quite coincidental wasn't it because we started this long before uh, covid yeah. came along it's just completely coincidental uh, that so that was going to be my, ne my next question kind of go living through obviously a very, very different time and we've got a lot of nice comfortable luxuries at home now that they probably didn't have in the 14th century but is there any way that go, going through experiencing seeing the impact of a pandemic now has helped you get inside the characters heads or kind of the the social psychology of of the period when you were writing is that is that a thing I don't yeah. know. well we, we've given all the all the characters a background yeah. and it was it was it was very interesting writing the background especially because mm. you know we've had so many stories on the on the media about the effects on on those who've been left behind or people struggling or or you know the the the, the situation of of very poor people in this country which mm. resonates with with all the things that happened in the 14th century so writing those back that that kind of thing did help to write the backgrounds and get and really get into who the person was mm. even if that was never mentioned on screen because it, it, it you give that to an actor and you say be this person and it give it gives them a head start yeah, yeah. I, I kind of martin. So, sorry peter go on no, you go on, martin well i was just going to say uh, uh, learning about writing musicals uh, uh, and any story really you want to tell what, what are referred to as universal truths. In other words, people are the same whatever century they're in. They have the same loves and, mm -hmm. and dreams. And, and that's what we're telling in this story, really. Yeah. 
there's a kind of a, an adaptability or sorry a need to adapt that uh, is present at the moment and various people companies organizations are having to rapidly readdress what they do and the way they do things uh, my daughter's company she works sorry, she works for a printing company but now they're making that hundreds of thousands of masks a week because they've suddenly so they've realized that's a situation that's that's a that's what's needed and they've bought in machines and they're making medical grade masks so completely different from what they were doing and i guess in the aftermath of the great death in the, in the 14th century suddenly people would have looked around and said what do we need to do now to and that would have been a real survival thing you know everybody would have grown some of their own food but maybe jobs needed doing that no one there was no one left alive to do and people would have to quickly change course change plans mm -hmm. and it changed, it changed the structure of society as well because there was such a shortage of labor that the power swapped to the ordinary person Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure that will happen with this one, but it, it definitely did in, it, it, during the worst outbreaks of the plague yeah. because wages, wages spiralled and they had to bring a law in to stop wages spiralling. Um, so, so, the, so, the, so the balance of um, power really did swap around. Yeah. I, I was wondering, the, the crooked spire itself, when, when was that built? I was trying to... Well, Chris Nixon got this right. He got it right. Okay. And so the spire was built uh, at some time during that century, towards the okay. end, which is when the story is set. Yeah. Uh -huh. But but before the before the plague, presumably. No, no, no after. After the first bout. Oh, after the first bout. Oh, oh, oh so 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 was there any? It was 30, 48, 49. That was the first. Uh -huh out of it as i understand it yeah yeah so, so so is there any theory that 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 in in some way the building of the church or churches was a, a response from people kind of as a a protective mechanism partially against yeah so good uh, I've, not, I've, not, I've not picked that up um but uh it's quite possible. Uh, that's, that's an interesting idea. I've not thought of that before. Maybe the people of Jessfield have this very big church. You know, the, crooked, the, the church of St. Mary's is quite a large church for a, a relatively small town in Derbyshire. Um, with a, and it would have had a tower in the centre. Maybe they felt, phew, we've come through this. Let's do something to the glory of God yeah. and, say, and, and put a spire on it. I, I don't yeah. know. The, I I would I I have no idea, but I'd guess I'd guess spires generally kind of the you know kind of the getting closer closer to God possibly is sometimes part of the part of the appeal. So yeah, maybe maybe that does all link together quite quite nicely. Um, I think I had I had a few questions uh, written down and posed to me. I think I've I think I've exhausted the ones given. Um, was there anything anything anyone would like to add or talk about that we've not discussed yet? It, it does feel slightly um, sort of downbeat at the moment. We're very keen to get this story going um, and it's great fun creating bits of it. Uh, but for a personal point of view, um, I'm anxious as to when, whenever it'll sit on a stage, you know. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking back the other day, how many years I've spent playing music for a live audience, but largely folk, but not, but it goes back, you know, decades and suddenly there's this space here and i haven't been doing it and i'm wondering how long is that is that gap gonna last it's very true how, how, how are we feeling about the impact of um quarantine lockdown the, the pandemic on on theater and music and performing arts as a whole are there any dreadful any comments i know dreadful um and I, I i sent um a, a petition round to friends to sign for support for the, for the arts and culture and somebody sent back well you know there's more important things and I do understand that that you know that there are there are a lot of um, people who who have been hit really badly mentally economically socially but there are also people in the art world who are in the same situation so it's not just when, when I think when we say we want to support the arts, it's not just supporting Covent Garden. It's about all the arts. You know, the small theatres, the small groups who 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 depend on it for 
very little money. Most people do this kind of thing because they love it, not because they're going to they think they're going to make millions of pounds. Uh, and so it really is very important that we 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 keep going and we try to get what we we want to get on on the stage at some point, even if that's outside. So 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 is there is is a plan eventually, whenever possible, to stage it in Chesterfield, to stage it near the spire, or or what 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 are the what are the kind of the, the long term visions regarding um, performance? Yeah, I'd like, like to stage it in, in uh, the pomegranate, ideally, oh, yeah. and possibly linked with the church. Yeah, excellent. Sounds fantastic. Really? Yeah, the, the, the pomegranate theatre is in in the same building as the museum in Chesterfield, and and in the museum is the winding wheel, the windlass, which was discovered at the top of the tower in on the, in the church where it had been left after its use as the, as the the power for lifting up the timber to make the spire. So that windlass would have been built. They'd have lifted the timber, built the spire, and then they just left the windlass there, and it was discovered this uh, in just the last century. Uh, um, and translate it and, and, and then you know, put to, I think they had to dismantle it to get it out and then put back together again in the museum. So there's a kind of a, a hub of, of this story there, the museum, the theatre, the pomegranate theatre and the church, all you know, within spitting distance of each other in Chesterfield. There, there are twisted spires on the continent. Mm. And um, I, I only discovered this when I, when I went um, to France last year. And I saw a twisted spire, and it was clad in tiles. Um, and so I had a look, and that there have been some. So it, it, you wonder whether it, they might have set out to make a twisted spire and got it wrong, or whether it was it just buckled. And nobody knows that. Nobody knows why it's the way it is. That would be interesting to find out. I, I thought it was the devil that caused it, wasn't it? Oh, could it be? <laughs> the devil. <laughs> Well, when the, when people see the show, they'll find the answer, won't they? <laughs> it's very much something to look forward to. Um, I I think unless there's any further comments, I think that makes a good place to to wrap up. So thank you all for doing the Q and A. Thank you all for your your roles in creating the Crooked Spire. And I think I speak for everyone who's seen either heard about it or seen the twenty minute uh, clip that we're very much looking forward to seeing the full finished article whenever that may be in performance hopefully at the pomegranate um so yeah thank you thank you martin thank you peter thank you mary and and goodbye bye <laughs>